What's up, party people? Welcome back. It's time to feed. It's Monday, August 7th, day 20 since they've been hatched. So, in theory, I have two 20-day-old hatchlings that are hungry and ready to eat. I hope. Now, let's start right here. I'm about to feed, or at least try to, dot and no dot, one each, a live mouse. So be warned, if things go according to plan, you will see in this video a mouse die. Don't want to see that? Don't watch the rest of this video. In the pet trade, when it comes to feeder rodents, they usually come in a few general categories. When the mouse is brand new, brand spanking newborn, they call those pinkies because they don't have any hair on them yet and they haven't opened their eyes. After that comes fuzzies. They've started to grow hair, they're a little bit larger, but they also haven't opened their eyes yet. After that comes the hoppers. They're called hoppers because they're starting to be mobile. They're starting to move around now on their own. But when it comes to mice, they don't really start out walking along just yet. Instead, they kind of hop around, almost like a kangaroo hop, to get from one place to the other. And then after that, you just have mice. Small, medium, large. Different ball python resources out there describe differently what their method is for starting to get their new hatchlings to feed. Some go with rats because these small baby rats will be a larger nutritional bundle. Others do what I'm going to do and start off with fuzzy mice. To be honest, probably a baby rat would be a little bit better. It'd be younger yet large enough to give a very good nutritional uh, meal to these hatchlings. Thing is, my local pet area, as I searched a couple different places, they don't have any baby rats that they keep in stock. So I'm going with two fuzzy mice, one for each snake. Now some of you who already yourselves are snake enthusiasts, you might be saying, wait a minute, I thought, you know, when it comes to feeding snakes, why wouldn't you use a frozen, pre-killed rodent and thaw that out and feed it to them? Well, ideally, that is what you want to do with your ball pythons. It's safer for the snake to be giving them pre-killed rodents. There is a chance that if you feed live rodents, to your ball python, that that rodent is going to try to defend itself, it could end up biting, scratching, or in some other way injuring your ball python. And so it's the safest option for that snake to feed it something that's pre-killed. The thing is, when it comes to hatchlings, you got to get them eating first. Get them to take food in captivity, live rodents. And then eventually you wean them from live rodents to pre-killed rodents. Some ball pythons take to it very quickly, some don't. It's just the more responsible thing to do for the snake. It's safer for that snake. It's more humane for the, for the mouse. But then also I have to look long term. Am I going to keep dot and no dot for the duration of their lives? I don't know about that. We'll see. Hey, I'm just right now living in the moment. Keep in mind, like four months ago, I did not think I'd be in this territory. So it's just a more responsible option. And then if ever I do pass on dot or no dot or both to somebody else, They've already been trained on how to eat pre-killed mice. But, gotta get them to just eat in general first. And that's what we're doing today. So here's the plan. This will be my feed box. When it comes to your ball python, you don't want to feed it in its cage. You don't want that python to start to associate whenever you're opening up their cage that that means it's dinner time. Because then they're going to be a little bit more nippy. They're going to be expecting something to eat. As I've said before, Ball pythons are very excellent for the pet trade because of how docile they are. But there are some ball python keepers who have been bit before. It does happen. And usually, when they are bit, it's around feeding time. When you're handling mice, that scent gets on your hand. Ball pythons, they don't have the greatest eyesight. But what they do have is excellent smell, and they also have little sensors up by kind of where a mustache would be that can detect infrared heat. So they can detect the heat waves coming off of you. If you've been handling mice and that scent's on your hand and that hand's in the cage moving around, it feels warm like a mouse and it smells like a mouse, there's a chance of getting bit. So when it comes to feeding them, you want a feed box, a different location to put them in. That way, they aren't associating their normal territory as being a place where they're going to get food. And when your hand is in there rummaging around, trying to pick them up or do whatever it is you're doing in there, they don't associate, ah, it's dinner time. And I'll be using these long forceps to hold the rodent and hopefully try to coax the hatchling ball pythons into striking at it and eating. 
Here we go. All right, we're going to start with Dot. Dot normally is a little bit more aggressive, and so I figured before I get any rodent scent anywhere near me, we should start with Dot. I don't want to feed no Dot first, have any rodent scent around me, and then trying to go get Dot out of her cage. Now remember, if you saw the last video, we saw that Dot has a little bit of a bulge on her. Now some people have said, online commented that it's might be or probably is a kink in the spine. Well, again, let me show you. That bulge is right here. I don't know that it's a kink. I don't know if that's really what's going on here. The bulge is right here. And when she's flat on my hands here, I can see the bulge right there on my middle finger. Yet, I can feel the spine completely right here. The spine is right there. And the bulge is down here. So, I don't know if that's a kink or not. Either way, though, Dot is the one that we have the concern with. We definitely want to see Dot not only feed, but produce some quality excrement uh, some days after. Okay, here we go. This might be success. Something else that I think that we should be clear about too, I don't take any pleasure in watching a mouse die. In fact, I feel pretty bad for the mouse. Something else that we could talk about here too is that pythons, they're constrictors. They are not venomous. I'm sure many of you knew that, but in case you didn't, nope, they have no venom. I don't think it'd be a safe idea to have a venomous snake as a pet. Usually they have a pretty bad temperament at that. But instead, okay, so this, this kill has not been yet successful. She's squeezing on harder now. Give her a break, it's her first time. So when the python constricts, what the python's doing is squeezing harder and harder. And every time that that mouse exhales, the python squeezes tighter. So that way another breath can't be taken. In addition to that, the underbelly of the python is sensitive enough that it can actually feel when the pulse has stopped, when the heart stops beating. Because it's sensitive enough to feel when the pulse has stopped, it instinctually knows that's time to let go and the kill is successful. She's trying to wrap around it a little bit more, squeeze it a little bit tighter. It's getting dark, let's get a little bit more light on here. And now she's got it by the head. Excellent. You go, Dot. Not sure if you heard that snorting in the background, but it was feeding time for my pugs, too. Oh, this is going so well. Very impressed. She's got the head all the way in her mouth now. Now she's got to work her mouth around the rest of the body. The jaw, by the way, if you didn't know this, can become unhinged. That's why, even though the head was pretty small, there can be some stretching to get around that entire mouse. Usually you want to choose prey for your ball python that is no larger than the thickest part of your ball python. That's usually a general rule for just about any snake. Now she's gotten enough of it in. Usually I've seen when Vela gets to this part, she just kind of lifts her head up and lets gravity do the work. But, oh, looks like she had her own teeth kind of snagged on her own body. You can see just about all that mouse is in there, just the hind legs and the tail are sticking out. That is one big gulp.
All right. And after they feed, they also have to kind of hinge their jaw back together. So sometimes you see like a python do what looks like a yawn. It's just trying to reset the jaw. Now shortly after they've eaten, if they get handled or stressed out, there's a risk of them regurgitating. So I'm just going to put the lid on our feed box and leave dot B for a while and let that food settle. All right, time for no dot. Okay, here is no dot. She has acted a lot more shy, bashful, timid. We'll see how she does here. Alright, so no dot, she ate. But she didn't do it then. She was quite camera shy and really was not interested in that mouse. What she was interested in was getting out of that feed box and that's really all she cared about. So what we tried instead was we placed dot in her domain and placed the mouse in there as well. Again, I would have preferred to watch her kill the mouse and eat it, make sure everything went down fine, but at the same time, Mother Nature doesn't always conform to what we want her to do. And No Dot did not feel like having an audience for it. But when I woke up this morning, the mouse was gone, and there is a bit of a noticeable, slightly noticeable bulge in her, right around where her stomach would be. Just a little bit thicker right there. It's like a full belly. Right there. Right there. So no dot has eaten. Now what do we do? In my lifetime, I can't think of any other time where I've really, really hoped to see poop. But I'm definitely hoping for these guys to poo and poo soon. So that way I know that that's all working correctly. When it comes to parthenogenesis and abnormalities that can occur, certainly there's plenty that can go on inside internally that we just don't really know about. So it's possible that some of the organs just haven't formed properly, aren't functioning properly. It's not a high likelihood, I don't think. Their behaviors have shown that they look and seem healthy. But I just want to make sure to get this verification that the digestive system's working good. In some cases, and they're rare, but in some cases, the intestines don't close properly. So as they're eating and digesting the food, it actually starts to leak out into the rest of their body internally. And that can definitely kill the snake. So, again, that's not a high likelihood, but with parthenogenesis being the way that these guys came about, it does up that small likelihood. So again, I just want to see that everything comes out fine. Once we get there, we'll have no real indicator that they aren't healthy. And so I can assume that these are two healthy snakes without any indication that they are otherwise unhealthy in some way. Again, Dot has that little bulge, but that might just be a visual imperfection, a little blemish. Nothing wrong with that. So yeah, let's hope for poo. So, I'll see you in a little bit. She's so 